Hey there Mustangs, I'm Jack Favaza. And I'm Rihanna Lee. First up for this highlights video, local artist Jomia Johnson led a gallery walk and interactive art experience on campus for students during last month's Black History Speakers series. To celebrate Black History Month, the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee invited local artist Jomia Johnson to showcase her unique paintings during ACLAB. Johnson's visit was split into two mods, the first being an artist Q&A and gallery walk, and the second being an interactive art experience for students. Aspects of my art, when you look at my art, you probably will not understand what it means initially by looking at it. And that's the whole purpose of it. My art is for the people to observe it more than just, you know, walk past it. It's something that you sit there and you look at. It's something that you put into your house and you could look at it over the, over the years time, a decade from now and feel a different way about it. That's something that I wanted to express to everybody else, to everybody when I was speaking, you know, introducing myself and everything. Like really tap into like digging deeper into art rather than looking at it and giving a definition right off the first look. Freshman Gavin McDonald appreciated how he was able to connect to Johnson's art and said he hopes her work will continue to display the perspectives of the black community. We all have these different mindsets of who we want to be and who we are. Kind of spoke to me of uh, just trying to be more motivated and we all are trying to do some, just might trying to make a change. Just hope others for more understanding of why we do it and who we are as people. Um, just our past and our present. Um, and what we're trying to get out of it. A new form of art has been all the rage, and there are many questions surrounding ethics. Staff reporter Tessa Autry brings us more as she dives into this topic. Art is a concept that has been around since the beginning of human time. It is a form of expression that can depict things like delectable desserts, flamboyant birds, and even astronaut dogs. But there is one major factor that makes these works unique. They're all generated by artificial intelligence. AI tools have been around for a long while now. However, they continue to advance their skill set, and schools across the nation are now allowing students to utilize these technologies, including the Rockwood School District. However, there is an ongoing debate about whether AI technology is doing more harm than good. Students with varying artistic abilities share different perspectives about what kind of impact AI will have on the world of art. Well, I do think that AI art has the potential to be really helpful, especially in the realm of companies that are needing something like, oh, I just need a quick graphic really quick. I do think it can be helpful in that regard. The thing that I don't really like about AI art is the fact that it steals art from people that are actually making it. And there's not a lot of consent with that, like, hey, can I use your art as a reference for this? People spend a lot of time on this. They spend their time, their money, and they put their heart and souls into a lot of this. And it makes me really sad to see how something that somebody worked so hard on can just be taken immediately and used for something without their consent. The idea that AI art will replace artists in the workforce is an ever-growing issue. No matter what, um, it's going to impact the career of artists. I mean, like it already has. A lot like, even like book illustrators, like a lot of the artwork on books have been more like AI art. Generating an AI image is a very simple process. All a person has to do is type in a prompt and click a button to yield results fast. I think AR art can be a little bit helpful or like helpful for artists in the way that it can easily, you can easily find references for like exactly what you need. I wish it was more ethical. And I do think that art is to be shared with people. I don't think it should be necessarily monetized all the time. It should just be used to connect with people. So it makes me sad to see that people just want to take it and use it for their own credit. Overall, AI-generated artwork has its benefits and disadvantages. Needless to say, it won't be going anywhere anytime soon. This is Tessa Autry for your MHS News. The geometry and construction class has been at Marquette for the past six years, but this year's build is a first. Associate executive producer Elliot Jorgensen takes us to the site. The sounds of construction ring out around MHS, but this time it is not for another expansion, but a tiny home. 
Marquette's very own geometry and construction class is creating its very first tiny home. This home is built upon a custom-made 8x20 trailer. The basis for this home was created by the geometry and construction class at Eureka High School. And I started with that and then I actually produced the plans that we're using with you know several changes, a few modifications to make it a little uh, improved upon on their version. That's what we're starting with. Um, really a bear trailer, some rough ideas, some photographs are the ones that they built over there in Eureka and you know going from there. The geometry and construction class is a blend of just that, geometry and construction. It meets every day during 6th and 7th hour and alternates between building and math days. The class's goal is to make practical use of abstract concepts. Everyone lives in a structure. To understand what's going on behind the walls and just some, some basic knowledge and ultimately like if you can get a kid to understand that hey my toilet is just leaking, to call a plumber is probably going to cost you a hundred plus dollars. If you just take the lid off the tank of that toilet and look down there, there's one simple mechanical component. You don't have to pay the plumber to do it yourself. And it's such a benefit to then be able to pass that on to the next generation of kids that will hopefully save that $100. Students are given hands-on participation in constructing this home, which will be sold once it is done next school year. In previous years, Geometry and Construction has built sheds, but nothing to the scale of a full tiny home. Um, I think it's more like activity-based, and you can like do like more like stuff with, with like friends. I've measured, cut, put up boarding, put up a whole wall, basically almost everything. We've all done something. Just like see like what we can make and see how like the end result is. It's fun. It is really, really fun. Like we laugh a lot, make jokes, we have all these like inside jokes with the people in my classroom, like nicknames, all kinds of things. It's like really like a nice environment to be around. This is Associate Executive Producer Elliot Jorgensen signing off for MHS News. Skateport Plaza, located on Wideman Road in Manchester, has been providing a hangout spot for all ages since 1991. Reporter Angel DeSalvo takes us inside. I'm a freshman at Marquette High School. I go to Skateport like every other weekend, sometimes every weekend. I like being here so I can hang out with my friends and skate, get some exercise. It's always really fun. They have amazing snacks and stuff. The wall is really pretty. There's art all over. It's very cool. And I just love coming here because the owner's really nice and the staff is really nice. And everyone's just super sweet. Skateport was built in 1991 by a friend of ours. He wanted to retire and ask Randy, my husband and I, if we wanted to buy it. So we did in 2000, and we've been running it ever since. I love the kids. I love seeing people have a good time and enjoy themselves. I, most of my customers are very happy, and they tell me so. I try really hard to make sure they have a good time. What do I like most? Definitely my grandma and the staff around here, and I do love to watch uh, children be happy and have fun. We have four like sessions a week, usually I work like three. It's a fun place to hang out. I know I've come here on multiple occasions just on my own or with friends before that. Um, I love coming here as a kid too, so it's just a great place to hang out and have fun. That's a wrap for today's MHS News March Highlights video. Be on the lookout for our next Highlights video coming out within the next month. In the meantime, stay connected with us at Your MHS News on Instagram for video teasers and fun content. Until then, I'm Rihanna Lee. And I'm Jack Favaza, signing off for MHS News. What's up, Marquette High School? I'm Harris Ellington. This is Stefan Bolshniak. And today, we are reviewing Japanese Kit Kats. So right here, we got um, strawberry, I think. All right. Cheers. Cheersies. That's fire. That's it. That's heat. All right, next up, we got the Matt Chop. I'm not a fan of mocha tea, so I don't think I'm I'm gonna like this one. But but I like mocha tea, so I will give my honest review. All right. Mm -mm. I don't like the herbal. Mm. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. The aftertaste really hits you. Hits you with some hot garbage. All Next, right. we've got orange. Cheers. Hey, cheersies. Oh. Oh. Uh. 
I was told that this is dark chocolate, but that's a lie because there's a little coffee cup on there. Uh, I don't think we're ready. I don't think we're gonna like this very Cheers. much. Cheers. Get ready right. to throw up. Here Do we, we go. Have a Three, two, one. Like imagine, imagine, imagine having a yeah. Imagine having the s'more cereal, but instead of milk, you use coffee. <laughs>